It's your boy Constavis34, and today is February 21st, 2020. On sale day for the Dave Matthews Band. Official public sale was today, and um, just had some thoughts I wanted to share about today and in the current state of DMB ticketing. So, a lot of the same old, same old with this day, right? Ticketmaster tricks uh, kicking you out of the waiting room thinking you got tickets and they're gone. Um, lots of waiting and anxiety and anticipation. Uh, there also was just those six stories of success. You know, they were here and there, people getting pit or getting uppers or getting lowers. Um, some people did get tickets today without the platinum price. And few really low, but a lot of people in the mid-pavilion and upper pavilions did get some face value seats, right? There's some things that have been changing and they continue to change today and this past week, right, with the warehouse making its announcement for those confirmations, right? So warehouse top tier reserved, they're priced differently this year, but these prices are getting more expensive, especially for intimate venues. It used to be 115 across the board. That's not the case. Some are 125, some are... You know, more expensive than that for Durant, Oklahoma. So you're seeing the top tier price uh, be more expensive in certain venues. And you're also seeing that top tier price go to parts of the venue that are higher up. SPAC is pretty much all expensive. You know, there is no lower price uh, tier reserve seat. And that makes sense. But the other venues, if you're dead center anywhere except the last two or three rows, you're paying the full price of a seat that is as close as you can get or in the pit for the warehouse. And that is something that is a bummer for many fans, right? The people, yes, I got confirmed for the top tier price. And this has been getting further and further higher up. You're getting the top tier price in the upper level now. People are like, wait, I'm in the upper level row this and that. And yes, yes, it's a face value seat. But this seat used to be 50, 60 bucks just seven years ago and now it's 115 plus fees uh so that is frustrating and the other thing you can't get any lower level seat for face value on the on sale day it seems like and i know some people are saying yes yeah, some of the seats they're listing as platinum and this and that there seems to be that you cannot get the closest seats before the pit whether you're at the far corner or you're dead center they're not selling these lower level seats for the 115 or the 125, they're selling them for 300 and 400. And every year it's gotten closer and closer. Now, the last two years, you can't get in the on sale a decently priced ticket uh, in the lower level. What's new this year that I noticed is you can't buy a single ticket when there's a pair of tickets left. That's frustrating because I'm going to some of these shows, actually the majority of the shows, I'll be going by myself, sitting by myself, be hanging with friends before. I'm excited for the Mohegan shows, uh, and the Guilford shows, and Mansfield shows. I will be hanging out with people before, but I'm getting a single by myself, and I've requested singles for the warehouse for some of these shows because I want to just get seats. I don't care about having someone to go with. I don't have to worry about paying for a ticket. Hey, can you come? Can you come? No, I'm just going by myself. I can't buy a single seat if there's a pair. And there's some great seats where, look, there's, th there's two seats in a row. You can't buy that single. Now, too, you're seeing three seats in a row. If someone wants to say, hey, I'll buy two of those three seats, you can't buy it. Ticketmaster is saying, look, we're not going to allow us to be stuck with a bunch of singles around the venue, except in the rows where there is an odd seat out. That is crazy. I want to buy this seat. But you're saying, nope, someone has to buy the pair. We also are seeing aisle seats, and this started to come along, so I guess it's not fully new. Aisle seats now, they're all overpriced. You cannot get an aisle seat in like in even the back for the fair market face value price. They're upcharging every single aisle seat. They are penny pinching and being greedy. So that's what we're going through, and this is... Uh, some things that while they're happening, I'm not worried about. I'm going to make some tough decisions. I'll talk about that later in the video. 
here's what I'm feeling from the band. This is just from Takeaway Ticketmaster Live Nation. Because the band is part of this, this pricing. We're paying more money for less instruments, no openers, and fewer guests. And look, I'm paying for it. That's on me. I'm looking myself in the mirror and saying, this is what we're doing. But that's the reality and that's the frustration we have. And that's why people aren't going anymore. And that's a trend that I think that's going to continue to grow. The violin is a treat. To have a soulful sound in a song where you really have a more acoustic driven sound in the band. To have a soulful sax guest or have a soul allow Jeff to be soulful in certain songs without everyone blaring over him. We don't get that. Like that, that's a treat. That used to be the standard for this band. And the risky changes and, and oh, let's try all these different things. That's not happening. We're getting more standard shows. And there is a huger disconnect between the fans and the management and the marketing. The fans and, and, and the rest of the people on the other side of the stage, it's separated. We pay all this money for tickets. And at the end of the ticket buying process, after all the fees, 50, 60, 100, $200 in fees, depending on how many tickets you buy, this band wants us to donate two bucks to plant trees? Are you kidding me? And this happened with the warehouse, although I got confirmed without donating. Look, I donate to many great causes. Farm Aid, I don't broadcast them. And the other ones, I don't broadcast. I volunteer. I don't want to broadcast where I volunteer. That's not what volunteering is about. I want to change the world. I do change the world. But the idea that you want us to plant some trees. Come on, guys. Plant some trees. Are you kidding me? After you raise the prices yet again, that is a huge slap in the face of the fan base. Many of us who, who if you check on Twitter, you check on Facebook, we're all about great causes. We're all about helping each other out when, when something's going bad in someone else's life. But donate $2 to help DMB play. How about you cut your fees and then take those fees and donate them to plant some of your trees yourself? I'm sorry. Okay? The other thing. You're seeing a lot more backlash this year. It's been growing over the years. And there are always people that complain, come to Texas. Come to this. Come to that. That's, that's given. But you're seeing fans express their dissatisfaction with how expensive the ticket prices are from Ticketmaster, even though you know they're going to be expensive, they're just even more expensive this year. And the other thing that is just laughable, this band's marketing has something that they, get your tickets now before they sell out. Look, we sold out Mohegan. Mohegan has 10,000 seats. Every seat is a perfect seat to see the band. Of course you sold it out. It's the first time since 2010 the tour opens in Hartford, the summer tour that is. Of course you sold it out. Oh, we're going to Durant, Oklahoma. There's 3,000 seats in this intimate venue. Of course you sold it out. Congratulations. And then we sold out Ben, Oregon. 8,000 seats for one night. Congratulations. Now, the one that is impressive is Meriwether Post Pavilion in Columbia, Maryland. I think that's in Montgomery County, Maryland, for all my folks out there in the DMV area. That's impressive. I got to give them props for that. Everything else isn't sold out. Okay, the Gorge isn't going to sell out. SPAC isn't going to sell out if you count the lawn. Deer Creek may sell out, but it may still have some lawn seats left over. West Palm Beach didn't sell out. It's not going to sell out. Um, you know, you're not going to have these places that are even the best place to see the band. The lawn's not going to sell out because that's where this band is. It's not an affordable enough price for, for it to sell out in these once venues that would fill up and sell out. Um, and... This is what I hope people will do. I've been preaching, wait it out, wait it out, wait it out. I hope that we will wait it out. I hope that you guys will check on the forums, check on the, the, the different marketplaces like cash or trade and stuff up closer to the shows because there will be some deals. These brokers can't sell every ticket, all right? Ticketmaster can't sell every ticket to every show. Look at Mansfield, which was bad last year. There's tons of seats in the open air sections. There's tons of lawn for a lot of these places. Um, even Guilford, New Hampshire, the back of the venue is still full. Because they're full of it with the prices. Wait it out. Let's, let's take a stand. And what I'm seeing is I've seen a lot of comments. People say they can't afford 
to go to these shows, or they can afford it, but it's just not worth the money. The principle of paying all this money for for to the to to face value, or even to the warehouse, right, to get a seat in one of the last rows, and you're paying the top reserved price for it. Um, but it's center, which I love. I love being center, but still, this shouldn't be that expensive. This is going to be a trend where we are going to see fans say, you know what? DMB isn't worth it this year. There's no violin, right? This band is far from the sound. I don't care about how old they got. It's far from the sounds we used to get. We used to have amazing openers. Even in 2013, the head and the heart. I mean, just recently, the last set of openers that they've had uh, for the bands before, before they said, all right, we're going to just be by ourselves. They were some great openers. But that, you know, those days are gone. There's no openers. There's even the, the A1 openers from the 90s and early 2000s. They're never touring except if you go to the Gorge, which is a good reason to go. But still, just the Gorge? Like, the Flectones used to chill all tour with this band. That's not the case. The Roots toured with them. Snoop Dogg did a show at Fiddler's, um, you know, for maybe just that. I think it was just that show. But that's, those are cool things that are gone. If the band is watching this, I love you guys. Even if I critique the set list, set list, I'm going to like probably five shows, right? But I'm even thinking, you know what? I can afford to pay. Uh, I budget for concerts for DMB. I can afford to go to these shows and pay the reserve prices for Mid Pavilion. But you know what? I'm probably not going to pay lower tier, which I could still afford as well. It's just the principle of it is just unless I get something on StubHub or Cash or Trade. I'm getting lawn and that's it. And next year, I don't think I'm doing five shows. You know, I'm trying to soak it in. You know, I have a little more buying power myself than I did five years ago. So I'm trying to have fun. But this is a reality. There are a lot of fans this year that woke up, said, you know what? Screw the prices. I'm not going. There's been fans that Hartford was down before they switched to Mohegan. Other venues have been significantly down. The, the SPAC has lost a lot of its even lawn right? The pavilion always sells out. It's lost its lawn crowds. Its walk-up attendance is down. Deer Creek is one of the few that has really done really well. If you look at the numbers, Alpine has lost, but even though it's not here this year, it lost a lot of people. So, I mean, the band, the disconnect between the band and, oh, marketing, marketing, save the tree. Are you kidding me? What type of super duper lyrical miracle, uh, that, no, not lyrical miracle. What type of super duper fake activist type thing are you talking about? Donate $2 after you, we dropped like literally two tickets plus fees is almost like four, nearly 400 bucks in some case, depending on where you buy these two tickets, right? On the primary. And you want us to donate to, tr get out of here. Um, your partners, Pearl Jam, your buddies in Pearl Jam are doing things to make change. Mumford and Sons is doing things to make change to say, you know what, we're going to stop this. Um, I know Elton John doesn't have, like he has a fan club, but he, but his final tour, I got tickets through the verified fan process. I know the warehouse is a fan club, but you should verify more fans who buy for the pre-sale to make sure they're actually fans. Dead and Company, same thing. I got verified fan Dead and Company tickets. And there's flaws in that, but at least those tickets went to fans like me. Things need to change um, or we're going to change. And actually, we are changing. And that's why some of these venues got cut like Hartford. There was bad attendance and uh, they go to Mohegan. But the attendance is bad because of these prices. And yes, Mohegan will sell out. It's 10K. It's a great venue. Um, I'm going to both shows. But... There's other shows that just the attendance is not going to be there. The lawns are going to be empty, or rightfully so. So this band needs to come back. You know, Stefan is about every injustice in the world except ticket buying. He, oh, Donald Trump is bad. He is this. He's evil. But Ticketmaster is not. <laughs> I mean, Donald Trump, look, my, my, my investments are going up, and I'm not a huge fan of Trump. And maybe I should stay away from political. But but Donald Trump is so bad. Yeah, Ticketmaster isn't. <laughs> what is Ticketmaster? You know, every injustice in the world this band takes a stand for, except ticket buying. Their partner is Pearl Jam. Mumford and Sons, I believe, has has. Um, I, I don't know if I think they did. They think they did jam with this band. These are their peers who are taking stands and saying, "Look, 
These seats are only going to be resold for face value through a fan-to-fan -fan marketplace. They, Dave Matthews Band is quiet. When it comes to their money, they're just like these conservatives that they tend to hate, right? Oh, no. So hopefully things will change. And if they don't, I'm still going to wait it out. I'm not freaking out right now. Okay, worst case, I'm either not going to go to a show that I plan to go to or I'm going to get the lawn. Or I'm going to get an upper real cheap. I'm not paying these prices even though I can afford to because it's ridiculous. So wait it out, folks, like I've been preaching. Um, I'm excited to meet a lot of people this year that I plan to meet through the various shows. And that's really what's keeping me to go to all these shows. The reason I'm going to five shows is so I can connect with some of the people, DMB Mamas and Matt and Jesse and some of the people on Twitter. I'm excited to see everyone, but I'm not excited about what's going on with everything else, but it's not going to break my spirit. I'm going to play the system. I'm going to wait it out. I got some warehouse tickets and I'm waiting to see what the market does closer to these events. I suggest you guys do the same. It's your boy Conservist34. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'm out. Peace.